We often talk about questions that are a lot easier than they sound. I think this is one that's a lot harder than it sounds. And it's not impossible, but my first instinct, just kind of quickly looking at it, would be like, oh, if I graph this, I can probably see what's going to happen if I move it four down. So I would graph it in Desmos. The problem is it's not like the Y or X uh, intercepts are convenient numbers, right? They're these decimals. So I, I can't like just like visually see what's going to happen if I move that four down. My brain can't really handle like the negative 5.9. So uh, we could do it. Um, and if we did, the way that um, I guess I would handle it is um, kind of maybe guessing and checking some other equations. But uh, the best thing for me is if I'm having, a, if I have a line that I don't really quite understand, the best way to kind of understand it better is to get into y equals mx plus b format, because then I can do a lot of these changes very easily. So what I might do here is take this original equation and just rearrange it to y equals mx plus b. So that's going to mean subtracting. So let me write the whole thing out. Start by subtracting 9x from both sides. So we have negative 10y is equal to negative 9x plus 19. Then uh, you can divide by negative 10. And uh, whether you leave it as a um, decimal or a fraction, uh, it's kind of up to you. I'm going to leave it as a fraction for now. So neg uh, neg the two negatives become positive. That's 9 tenths x um, minus 19 over 10. Then I understand what this means to move it down four units. Now I understand my y-intercept, y-intercept is going to go down four. So because now I'm in y equals mx plus b format, it's easier for me to take this y-intercept here and subtract 4 from it to get a new equation. So my new equation is going to be still the same slope, 9 tenths x, and then here I'll just do my calculator. So negative 19 over 10, that's negative 1.9, minus 4, so that's negative 5.9. And I, I guess I could have done something similar by using the graph that I was given originally, right? This is negative 1.9. So minus 4 would be negative 5.9. The, the problem though, is it's very hard for me to know, know the slope of the graph when I graph it, because it's not a nice number, right? 9 tenths is not nice. So uh, that makes it difficult. But now I have another equation and I can graph this. I can graph it as uh, written y equals uh, 9 tenths, for those of you who like fractions, um, x minus 5.9. And now I can see the shift, right? So this is more me checking than anything else. I can see the shift, and I can see now they wanted the x-intercept. So the x-intercept's right here, uh, and it's this number 6.556, which I believe is acceptable to the SAT because of the way that the student-produced response things work. Uh, you need to fill up all the spaces, and without a negative, there are five spaces. So six is one, point is another, five, five, six, right? So the, the decimal point counts as a space. Um, I don't love that, though. I don't, I don't really like these student-produced responses when we have these kind of weird decimals. I just get very nervous that I'm going to somehow enter it wrong. So this would be a case where I would have stuck with my original kind of instinct of keeping things in terms of fractions. Uh, so... Um, if I do, uh, if I kind of go back here and do negative 19 tenths, negative 19 tenths, and subtract 4 from that, so that's minus 40 tenths, then this becomes negative 59 tenths. And so this same equation is 9 tenths x uh, minus 59 tenths. And I guess I could have uh, just gotten that from the 5.9. Tenths are not hard to, to convert between decimals and fractions. Then, because they're asking for an x-intercept, I know that my y-coordinate is equal to 0. So let's plug that in. 0 is equal to 9 tenths x minus 59 tenths. Let's add this over to the side. So that's 59 tenths equals uh, 9 tenths x. And then we would solve by multiplying by 10 ninths on both sides. So the tens will cancel. And then 59 over 9 is another answer that we could put in that spot. And it's nicer to me because it's kind of simpler. If we were to put it in the calculator, we can check 59 divided by 9 is 6.55555 repeating. So 6.55 repeating. Um, so it's the same number, 
like I said, I just I get very nervous about these new student produce response questions for the digital SAT. There's just the, the rules about what to put in are very weird, and I, I get very nervous. If it's a normal, easy decimal, like one half or one fourth that ends, I'm happy. But for these ones that are like repeating, I just I don't know. I don't I think the SAT did a bad job of setting this up. So my advice is if possible, if it's easy to do. When you have these kind of weird ones, see if you can convert it back to a fraction. A lot of calculators will do this. This particular calculator is a little, a little annoying, converting something back into a fraction, but uh, it's doable. Um, so, you know, it's a little safer in my mind because I know exactly what I'm getting. There's no rounding. There's no truncating a decimal. There's no dealing with a negative. It's just 59 ninths, end of story, and it makes me feel more comfortable. But uh, with practice, you should be fine. Just make sure you understand for these student-produced responses how the rules work so that you don't lose points on something because you just didn't round correctly.